Child poverty in Nova Scotia. How bad is it? Last month, the Canadian Research Institute published a report card of child poverty in Nova Scotia for 2015. The data shows that Nova Scotia had the third highest child poverty rate in all of Canada that year. We know that because the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives was able to use the data from the long-form census for the first time in a decade. It's because the mandatory long-form census was canned in 2006, made voluntary in 2011, and then reinstated by the Trudeau government in 2015. Back in the late 80s, every federal political party agreed to fix child poverty by the year 2000. The census data shows how each province is doing with that promise. That's why the CCPA is keeping an eye on it. The CCPA says that in 2015, more than 35,000 children were living in poverty. That's one in every five kids. The report says that Nova Scotia's rate is a little better than it was in 2000, but it's actually worse than it was in 1989. In 2015, Nova Scotia had the worst child poverty rate in all of Atlantic Canada. Here's the top or bottom 10. The five areas with the worst rates all include Indigenous communities. The report suggests that nearly 73% of kids in Eskazoni First Nation are living in poverty. But before we dive too deep into the data, let's look at how the CCPA dug them up. For the research, they looked at social conditions like housing and food. Things like low paying jobs and poor public services all affect those conditions. In the report, the CCPA does admit that the data doesn't exactly show how big of an impact the 2016 Canada Child Benefit Program will have. It said that while it will probably have a positive impact, more investment is needed. With such high statistics, one can imagine a pretty grim picture of what life is like for the kids in these First Nation communities. And while it's likely that there are kids living in very poor conditions, the leaders of these Mi'kmaq communities, the ones that CBC was able to reach, say the numbers don't really reflect reality. In fact, they say things look a lot better. Representatives from Eskazoni First Nations say their council is honed in on social programs and business ventures during the time CCPA didn't have access to the long-form census data. We also spoke with officials from Sabaganagadik First Nation, which is located on the Mi'kmaq Postal Code on the top 10 list. They said, among other things, they're engaged in a social science project with the Nova Scotia University to understand the gaps in their community's wealth distribution. In Member 2 First Nation, Chief Terry Paul says he and the band councillors are extremely dissatisfied with the numbers. Along with a focus on education, Member 2 created a youth chief and council and boosted social programs by partnering with the YMCA. All three nations said that these efforts should, over time, lift the pressures that keep families in impoverished conditions. Let's say we're able to look into the future and see child poverty rates for the next 5, 10, or even 15 years, so long as the long-form census stays mandatory. What can be done to close the gap between these poverty rates in Indigenous communities and the rest of Nova Scotia? Chief Terry Paul says exactly what Member 2 and other nations are doing right now. Work with governments, try to build nation-to-nation -nation business, and focus on groundwork programs for the youth, the future of their communities.